Welcome back to the Professor's Dubois channel. I am Professor Victoria and this is Professor Corey and today we're going to continue our lecture series with solution stoichiometry. Okay so when we do reaction stoichiometry with solutions it's really not a whole lot different than what we've done before. Remember stoichiometry requires a balanced equation and what stoichiometry means is if we have information about one thing we can predict information about something else in that balanced equation. Now with solutions we're going to be dealing with volumes and molarities of these different solutions and that's what make it that's what makes it a little bit different. For sure. So I want to just walk through kind of a road map of how to approach this problem. So we have our balanced equation that was provided. That's nice. And I like to write my data right underneath the um, species. So I know what I have and I know what I'm looking for. So I, for my H2SO4 over here, I have a lot of different provided data. So we have the molarity and whenever I have the capital M, I like to rewrite that as moles over one liter. And that tells me that I have a factor and I can use that to do some conversions. Um, we also have a molar mass because we have formulas from our, our equation so we can always get our molar masses. And I like to indicate what I'm looking for. So I want milliliters of H2SO4 when I'm all done. And then I also have over here some provided information about carbon dioxide. So I have information about carbon dioxide and I need to get to a volume of H2SO4. So when you have information about one thing and you need information about something else that's in that balanced equation, you have to go to mole island. You have to go, you have to turn that into moles and then use your mole-mole ratio to um, change that into another species. So for this, I'm, I'm on my right hand side here. So I'm starting with grams of CO2 and we kind of think of this as a bridge. It's a bridge onto Mole Island. So we're gonna use our grams per mole for CO2, get moles of carbon dioxide, use our one to one ratio from our balanced equation to turn that into moles of H2SO4. Then this is the difference. This is the new piece for reaction stoichiometry. You have a new bridge. Because molarity has moles in it, moles per liter, that means we can use it to either convert to moles or from moles to get back to a new thing, which is liters. And notice too, there, there's a lot of data in here and it's, it's tricky to figure out where to start. Yeah. And when you break all these things out, you, you noticed it, by writing the capital M as mole per liter and seeing that that's a factor, the only thing here that was not a factor was the mass, that 5.50 grams, and that's where you're going to start. Yeah. So here's our calculation. You want to talk through the calculation? Yeah, so, so we're starting with that mass. I like to put it over one. It just um, it helps me set up the following um, fraction where I... I can see very clearly that I need grams in the denominator. So what I'm doing is I'm using the molar mass to get to the moles of CO2. Then I'm using the balanced equation, um, the relationship between CO2 and H2SO4, one to one in this case. And then the next thing I'm using the molarity, and this is in red, this is the new step. I'm using the molarity, that H2SO4, in moles per liter. Now moles has to be on the bottom here to cancel the moles of H2SO4. So I'm left with units of liters. Now the question wanted milliliters, so we just have one more step where we're going to convert to milliliters. Easy as that. Here's another example. So here's an example. It says we are reacting um, a milligram amount, so, so a mass of zinc with a solution. So we, we're kind of combining the two. So we, we learned about mass stoichiometry before, now we're doing solution stoichiometry, and, and they, they, usually they're, they're, they're together. Um, so we have zinc re reacting with hydrochloric acid. We have to write our balanced equation. So that would be the first thing that you would do. And then um, I also want to point out that we have two different um, amounts of reactants. So we have our zinc and we have an amount and we also have an amount of our HCl solution. So this is a limiting reactant problem. We, we're not sure which one of these is going to run out first, but the question is asking a maximum amount or theoretical yield of one of the products. So this really goes back to a limiting reactant problem with solution stoichiometry. Yeah, so we have one part that's solution stoichiometry with the HCl um, the volume is in milliliters and then the other part is like what we did before when we took um, well milligrams in this case but we took a mass and went to um, an amount so 
it looks like, um, oh, in, in moles. I was going to say, it looks like we stopped at moles here, and usually we stop at grams. But uh, the first part here, we've got a balanced equation. Always have to have a balanced equation. doesn't always say that in the question. You know, right. it, 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 we need a balanced equation because we need those mole-mole relationships. So we've got the balanced equation, and we've got, you know, our, our information down there. Notice we've got two things that are not factors. That's another tip that maybe this is a theoretical yield problem. So starting with the zinc in milligrams, we first convert to grams of zinc because our molar mass is in grams per mole. We got that from the periodic table, the 65.38. That's the molar mass of zinc. So we're, we have our moles of zinc, and then we just do the mole-mole relationship to the zinc chloride, and that's based on the balanced equation. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. So we've got the moles of zinc chloride at 1.53 times 10 to the negative 4. That's if all of the zinc can react and we don't know yet there has to be you know enough hcl there for this to happen so the next step is to see start with the 15 mils of hcl and we're going to convert the milliliters to liters and then we can use that molarity so this time the moles are over liters liters cancel and we've got moles of hcl one more step here we have to say what's What's the relationship between the HCl and the zinc chloride? Well, there's two moles of the HCl. That goes in the denominator, so that cancels. We're left with moles of zinc chloride, and this answer was greater than the um, with the 10 milligrams of zinc. So that can't happen. There's not enough zinc there to make that much zinc chloride. So the what is the theoretical yield? 1.53 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. 1.53 times 10 to the negative 4. Small. So here's your practice. I want to point out one thing. Uh, we are going to be using the uh, this reaction for number 1, but the number 2, you're going to have to write your own reaction for that. And um, I'd like to... Do what do I want to point out? I want to point out that the first, um, the first question is not a limiting reactant question. I I'm just took a quick look at it. I, and um, you're going to want to start with what is not a factor, but break out your factors first and, um, and, and start with what's not a factor. Yeah, neither one of these are limiting reactant, actually. So yeah. pause the video and give it a try. Okay, here's your answers. Hopefully you did well. And that concludes this installment of the uh, Professor's Do Voice lecture series. Hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.